Greetings. Welcome to our second part of the forecasting lecture series. This time around, we're looking at the accuracy of the technique. And we're starting with the mean absolute deviation, MAD. Now, when we're choosing a technique, what we need to do is try out different techniques. Calculate the accuracy of each technique by calculating the average error. The lower the error, the better the technique, the more accurate. Then we we'll choose a forecasting technique with the lowest average error, which will be the most accurate one. And we have an important note, no forecasting technique is always best. And what might have been best in the past may no longer be the best one for your situation. Right? So this is a situation that is not static, it evolves. The techniques that we have covered in our first part were simple moving average, weighted moving average and simple exponential smoothing. So we are going back to those forecasts that we did and we're going to measure the accuracy of each forecast. There are three popular techniques for calculating the accuracy of the forecast. Those are the mean absolute deviation, the mean squared error and the mean absolute percentage error. For this lesson, we're focusing on the mean absolute deviation. We'll cover the rest in later videos. So the mean absolute deviation, MAD. First, we're calculating the error, which is the actual minus the forecast. What was the actual figure for the month? What was the forecast for the month? Then we're looking at the absolute error. The absolute error is just a numerical difference between the two. We don't care if it's a negative or a positive. So what we do for that is simply take a large amount minus a small amount. That's the easiest way to get the absolute error. And the MAD is the average of those absolute errors. So we total the absolute errors and divide by the number of figures. Ah, right, here goes. We did this forecast in the earlier lecture where we looked at the two month smoothly, simple moving average and we had a forecast. So we want to find the error now. For the first two months, we didn't have a forecast, right? So what we do is we just ignore those months. Starting with March, bigger figure 14 minus 11, three. April, 13 minus 10, three. Bigger minus smaller, remember. For May, 14 minus 12, two. For June, 13 minus 12, one. July, 13.5 minus 12, 1.5. August 12.5 minus 10, 2.5. And here we have the absolute error for each of these forecasts. Now we want the total. So we're just going to add them up. And we have 13 as a total. 3 plus 3, 6, 8, 9, and 4, 13. Then we want to find the average. So we're finding the mean absolute deviation. So how many values do we have? We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 errors. So we're finding the average of these six figures. So we Add them up 13 and divide by 6. So 13 divided by 6, 2.17. And we're saying the mean absolute deviation for the two months simple moving average is 2.17. Let's continue. So we also did a three month simple moving average forecast. And we want now to find the error. Ignore the first three months since there are no forecasts. For April, 12 minus 10, 2. May, 14 minus 12, 2. For June, 30 minus 12.7, that's 0 0.33. For July, 12.33 minus 12, 0 0.33. And for August, 30 minus 10, 3. Add these up, we get 7.66. How many values do we have? We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we're finding the average of these five numbers. So 7.66 divided by 5 gives us 1.53. And that's now our MAD for the three month simple moving average. So comparing these two techniques, we can see that the three-month simple moving average is more accurate than the two-month simple moving average because it has a lower MAD. But we're not finished. We need to look at the other techniques as well. So let's go. For the three-month weighted moving average with weights 3, 2, and 1, we have, ignore the first three months again. For April, 12.67 minus 10, that's 2.67. For May, 14 minus 11.67, 2.33. For June, 13 minus 12.67, 0 0.33. For July, 12.83 minus 12, 0 0.83. August, 12.67 minus 10, 2.67. This gives us a total deviation of 8.83. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 figures. So we're dividing that by 5 to get 1.77 for a mod. 
So let's look at what we have so far. Two months simple moving average, 2.17. Three months simple moving average, 1.53. And the three month weighted moving average, which weights 3 to 1, 1, 1 1.77. So we see that at this point, the three month simple moving average is still the most accurate so far. It has the lowest MAD. Not finished though. Let's continue. So the three month weighted moving average with 12.62 as a weight. What did we have? So for April, 13 minus 10, 3. For May, 14 minus 11.4, 2.6. For June, we have 0 0.2. For July, 1. And for August, 2.5. This gives us a total deviation of 9.3. And since this represents 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 numbers, we divide 9.3 by 5 to get 1.86. So let's sum it up. 2.17, 1.53, 1.77, 1.86. So we still see so far that a three month simple moving average is still the most accurate that we've covered of these four. But we have two more to go. So let's look at the other two and then we can see where we stand. All right, the simple moving, uh, simple exponential smoothing with alpha equals 0 0.2. All right, for February we have two. March we have 3.6. April 1.12, May 3.1, June 1.48, July 0 0.18, and August 1.86. This gives us a total of 13.34 as our total deviation. Now we want the average for the MAD. So how many numbers do we have? How many errors? We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So we're dividing 13.34 by 7 to get 1.91 as our mean absolute deviation. So looking at what we have so far, right? The lowest MAD so far is still 1.53, which represents a three month simple moving average. So, so far it is still the most accurate, but we have one more technique to go. So let's go. For this one, for June, we have one, 30 minus 12. For July, we have 0.3. And for August, we have 2.21, giving us a total absolute deviation of 3.51. Now, that's just three figures, 1, 2, 3. So we divide 3.51 by 3 to get 1.17. So let's look at what we have now. We're seeing 2.17, 1.53, 1.77, 1.86, 1 1.91, and 1 1.17. So, of course, the lowest of all of these is a 1.17 which means that the most accurate technique that we have covered is a simple exponential smoothing with alpha equals 0 0.3, right? So here we have it. We're saying based on that, we would recommend the simple exponential smoothing forecast with alpha equals 0 0.3. Why? It has the lowest mod, which means it's the most accurate. All right, so thank you guys. Looking forward to seeing you for the next video, which is when we'll cover the mean squared error. So thank you for watching. Please like, please subscribe. Take care and I'll see you again soon.